three things, a lamp, a weapon, and a rock. In fact, say it with me, a lamp, a weapon, and a rock. These are three main things how the Bible describes the Word of God. Number one, the Word of God is a lamp. A lamp. I'm not going to say a limp. I'm talking about a lamp. Why? It's because the Word of God is a light. I think David said in Psalms that your Word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. A lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You say, Dr. Sure, what is that? Well, what would a lamp do at your feet? It's going to show you where to go. It's going to give you direction. It's going to give you divine insight. Imagine trying to walk in the dark with no light. You're going to bump into things. You're going to stump your toe. Some of y'all know how y'all are. Y'all come down the kitchen for that late night snack. Y'all stump y'all toe. Y'all say all kinds of four-letter words. I know how y'all are. But guess what? As David said, the word of God is a lamp to your feet so you know where to walk. You can see the trap that the enemy sets and you're able to go around it. How powerful is that? The word of God is also a light to your path. How many guys need to know direction? How many guys need to know the direction to get to your next step, the direction to your next promotion, direction to your next breakthrough in your health, direction in your finances? Direction where it comes down to how in the world am I going to guide my children, not only through high school to college. In fact, where is my kid going to go to college? Some of you guys need direction on that. I know my wife and I, Lord, we need direction on that. Because one of my daughters is asking to go to college and she want to base it on how cute the mascot is. How, how the colors are so pretty. And how the campus is laid out. We're like, Lord, give us strength. Lord, you have to be a what? A light to our feet and a lamp to our path or a lamp to our feet and a light. you have to show us how to walk this thing called life out because you can't do it alone because if not if you try to do it the world's way you're going to be in darkness and see the devil thrives in darkness and darkness is not it doesn't mean absence of light necessarily that just means ignorance See, when the Bible talks about darkness, it doesn't necessarily talk about evil all the time. It talks about ignorance. It talks about that you don't know the path that God has already carved out for your life. Did you know that God has already carved a path out for you, for your life, so you can live an abundant life to the full until it overflows? And that path may not even make sense to you because God is never linear. I'm going to repeat that. God's path for you, beloved, is never linear. It's ups and downs. It's left and right. And so sometimes you go from A to D. You think you're going to go to E, but he'll take you back to B. <laughs> You'll be like, Lord, what in the world? Why do I feel like I'm going back? You know, it reminds me of a friend of mine that plays professional baseball. He'll do well in AAA. he get up there and want to have a shot to do well in the majors and all of a sudden they send him back he does well you know in the in the in the, in the triple a then they bring him up and then they keep sending him back say lord why in the world am i not staying here that means god has a plan that means god beloved is working on your character because if your character is not strong when god elevates you to the highest level you're not going to be able to stand that's why sometimes it seems like, God, why am I making two steps forwards and three steps back? It's because God is working on your character, beloved. And you don't see it now. But in the future, you're going to see that you're going to need that character to stand when there are times of compromise. A lot of people fall out of God's grace. I don't even say God's grace. Some people just fall because their character is not built. In fact, they fall into God's grace. They fall into God's net. <laughs> so what was the second one? I said a lamp, oh, a weapon. Mary, do you know God's word is a weapon? Paul talked about God's word is a weapon. He said, it take the sword of the spirit. See, the weapon of God is a sword. 
See, you cannot fight spiritual things with physical weapons. I'm going to repeat that. You cannot fight spiritual things with physical weapons. You have to fight it in the spirit. And that's what the word of God is. The word of God is your spiritual weapon. And you have to speak the word of God over that situation. Let me give you an example. If you're struggling in your health, Ebony, if you're struggling in your health, Mary, don't just take that. Don't be like Diddy. Take that, take that, take that. Don't just take it. No, you speak the word of God in that situation. Lord, you said that you're going to perfect everything that concerns me. Lord, you said by Jesus Christ stripes I'm healed. That's what you said. And you keep reminding God of his word. And when you remind God of his word, that doesn't mean God is amnesia. He doesn't, he doesn't know what's going on. And, 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 and God is, is uh, you know, getting all timers. No, it doesn't mean that. It means you continue to petition God of what his word says. And it's not for you, not for him. It's for you. It's for you to keep saying it so you can keep believing it. So it can get in your spirit and it becomes a weapon. And we don't use our weapon. Holy Spirit, speak this word. Holy Spirit told me to tell you, you're not using your weapon, beloved. Hallelujah. And your weapon, if the weapon you're using, if you're not being in the word of God, it's dull. It's not sharp, Evelyn. If you're not using the weapon of word, I'm talking about speaking it out your mouth. It's like going to war with a butter knife. How many guys can cut that ham on Thanksgiving Day with a butter knife? How many guys would even try? You wouldn't. What would you use? You would go and get the sharpest knife in your drawer. Likewise, if you don't, oh, Holy Spirit, if you don't spend time in the word of God, man, you're going to be trying to fight your enemies with a butter knife. You got to do that. You got to keep speaking. I don't, I don't care. I don't care if it takes a hundred years for the word of God to make manifest. Oh man, Holy Spirit, let me speak. Oh man. You know what? My mom, I'm getting emotional. Man, my aunt, man, they gave my aunt up, Glenda, to die. They said, you're not going to make it. And she had all kinds of health problems, liver issues, lung issues, blood issues. Man, she was on dialysis and, 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 and ICU. And, and we thought it was the end. We thought it was over. But somebody kept praying for her. Somebody kept saying, no. She's not gonna go out like this, and I'm 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 believing that she said it. Over. Lord, you did not say I was gonna go out like this. Lord, you said that you are a lily in the valley. Some of y'all don't know about that song, "A Lily in the Valley." So you gotta be from a missionary Baptist church to be about. He's a lily in the valley, and what brighter than a morning star? Y'all can say it with me. He's a lily. I'm live right now in the valley. Brighter. Okay, let me let me let me let me let me let me chill off there. Oh, you can say, "Precious Lord, precious Lord, take what my hand." Man, if the Lord got your hand, you ain't gonna go down. <laughs> Holy Spirit, speak this word. And so, anyway, my mom showed me a video. A video yesterday. She recorded my aunt Glenda. Not just walking, man. She was twirling. <laughs> you know what? Twir twirling is what Jesus do over you. Even in your lowest moment. He's singing and dancing. He said, he said if you hold my word, I'm going to make sure it comes to pass. If you hold on to my word, I'm going to make sure it comes to pass. Man, I was able to see a for real miracle. You know how we, we read about miracles in the Bible of, of, of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead? Man, I saw Jesus raise my Aunt Glenda from literally the dead, man. I actually thought that she was somebody else. I thought that my Aunt Glenda was my auntie, and they were just playing a joke on me. When I saw that, I said, Lord, thank you for allowing us to be able to see your miracle working power in 2023. And if you don't believe it, man, go to my YouTube page, man, or go to my mom. I'm going I'm to repost that, man. I'm just saying, man, God is still in the miracle working business. Don't ever give up on your loved ones, man. I know it's easy to do, but it's not over until God says 
it's over. And I don't care if that's in your health. I don't care if it's in your finance. I don't care if it's in your marriage. I don't care if it's with the children. I don't care if it's with your crazy husband or your crazy wife. <laughs> so God's word is a lamp, is a weapon, and finally it's a rock. It's a rock. In fact, I remember when my daughter was like four or five years old when we did an Easter play. And she was like, you know what? Um, they rolled away the wok. She said, wok. I'm like, what's a wok? Wok is something that Chinese people cook on. She said, that's the best she can say. She meant rock. The word of God is a rock. See, when you build your life on the word of God, man, your foundation is solid. Man, no devil or demon in hell can take you from that solid place. That is the rock, man. If you build your word and you build your life on anything else, it's shifting sand. If you build your life on things of the world, you on shifting sand, man. At any moment, it can be snatched away. But if your life is built on the word of God, which Peter even said that it's the rock. Jesus, you are the rock. Jesus, your word is a rock. And I can build my life on that. Man, that's a solid foundation. That's a surety. Hey, lamp. A weapon and a rock. Say it with me one more time. A lamp, a weapon, and a rock. God's word is a lamp, it's a weapon, and it is a rock. And it will never fail you. But you have to jump in. You have to get inside the word of God for yourself, number one. Sabrina, you have to, number two, you have to pray. Number three, you have to get around like-minded believers. People that's going to encourage you, people that's going to lift you up, people that's going to stimulate your faith. And you got to be around people that speak in the word of God. You got to continue to speak the word of God over your situation. And guess what? Not only that, even over yourself. We all get, get in disappointment. We all find ourselves in ditches in life. We all find ourselves in despair. We, always, we, we can always find ourselves in parts of depression. Even the greatest people found themselves in times of depression. Heck, even Jesus himself found himself in a point of depression. Dr. Show, what are you talking about? Okay, do you remember when Jesus had to go to the Garden of Gethsemane? And he was so stressed out. The Bible says he was so stressed out. He had a condition called hemohydrosis. And basically what that means is that you're so stressed out that the blood actually extrapolates from your capillaries and mixed with your sweat. And it's like drops of blood on the ground. And he said, Lord, if it's your will, if it's possible, please what? take this cup away from me. Even Jesus himself felt depression and he felt stressed and he was so, 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 so stressed out. And it wasn't the fact that he was stressed out because he was going to the cross, as some people taught and some people believe. No, he was stressed out because he said, God, I don't want to die here. I don't want to make it one step to the finish line and not finish the race. Lord, don't let me die in the Garden of Gethsemane, because if he would have died in the Garden of Gethsemane, he would not have fulfilled all the prophecy that he came for. And we would not have salvation. We would not have our salvation if Jesus would have died in the Garden of Gethsemane. And that's why Jesus prayed to the God, take this cup away from me, because if I die here, I won't be able to die for the sins of all the people in the past, in the present and future. And you did not bring me this far for me to die here. I know y'all ain't heard that. The Holy Spirit showed me that. And even Jesus dealt with everything that we deal with, right? addictions, depression, but he did not sin. So therefore, what we have to do is we have to link our faith to what Jesus did. He's the author and finisher of our faith. The Bible says Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. And I'm going to close it right now. And I want you to say this with me. Evelyn, Ebony, uh, 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 who else is on here? Mary, Sabrina, Angela, uh, Yvette. Um, Tommy, you know, um, who else is on here live? Um, Gretchen, Jesus is my lamp, my weapon, and my rock. Say it one more time with me. Jesus is my lamp, Jesus is my weapon, and Jesus is my rock. Therefore, I 
cannot fail. I cannot fail. Ebony, you cannot fail. Remy, you cannot fail. Sabrina, you cannot fail. Evelyn, you cannot fail. Jeremy, you cannot fail. Tiffany, you cannot fail. Angela, you cannot fail. Ava, you cannot fail. Jayla, who you cannot fail. Say whoever you are watching, whether it's now or five years from now, you cannot fail. If Jesus is your rock, your weapon, and your uh, lamp, you can't fail. Hope you got something out of this. If you got something out of this, share this message. Click like. Go to my YouTube 